All right, thank you for coming this afternoon to the February 21st virtual meeting of the License Commission. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Commissioners Jennifer Ewers and Helen Kahn. This meeting is being Zoom recorded, and we're going to start with public comment. If anyone is here to speak to public comment, please raise your Zoom hand, and Annie will unmute you. All right, um, and also if you are here for public comment, please state your name for the record. I found I'm on public. Andrew, is that you? Oh, that is me? Yes, I, I just wasn't sure if I was called on. But I'm Hi there, muted. can you just state uh, your name for the record, Andrew? Andrew Brow. Um, I own Highbrow Restaurant in Northampton as well as uh, Jackalope Restaurant in Springfield. And I'm the culinary director for um, White Lion Brewing Company with locations in Springfield and one in downtown Amherst. Um, we're, I'm getting, my group is getting to the point of uh, growth yet again. And I'm interested in opening. Oh no, you've frozen. Hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so looking at a, a couple couple locations in Northampton, one of them being a very large restaurant space right on Main Street that's been vacant for 10 plus years. Um, and I was just coming on trying to get a little information. I know we have a couple of liquor licenses with um, some decisions to be made. And I was just wondering if there was a possibility of applying as a new restaurant, bringing in a new concept if there could be any consideration for that. During public comment, we're not able to engage in any kind of conversation. So yeah. I can't answer that question, but okay. I'm really glad that you came and gave us this um, information about your interest and we'll take yep. it here, I guess. Okay. Okay. But thank you very much for uh, letting us know your plans or hopes. Absolutely. And I'm very excited. And, and you know, my restaurant in Northampton is very busy and I think I can bring another concept of be equally, if not more exciting than current. So no doubt. Oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, Thank you. All right. Thanks. And we have some, someone else here for public comment. Raise your Zoom hand. Roberto. Hello. Hi there. If you could just state your name for the record. Hello, my name is Roberto Carlos Saravia, owner, chef of Masa Mexicano, a Mexican restaurant located in Florence. I'm a first generation immigrant restaurant owner who opened on December 18th, 2020 during COVID. I'm here to share Today to share my story, I'm working towards securing a liquor license. Since opening, I've been interested in securing a liquor license, and unfortunately, not many have been available. And those that were available are on the private market. My understanding is that the city holds a couple remaining licenses. While I am in support of the licenses going to the Iron Horse and Calvin, I'd like to gain a better understanding on how I could secure one of the other remaining licenses. This past year, I went through the application process of securing a malt and white license as a way of growing my business. I've continued to remain in good standing with the state. My next step in growing my business is continuing to add to the Northampton and Florence economic vibrancy is to secure a full liquor license. My ask today, is that you consider my restaurant in securing one of the remaining licenses. My hope is that the commission can clearly outline how the restaurant can secure the license in a fair manner. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you. And anybody else here for public comment? Looks to be about it. Okay. 
All right, then we will uh, carry on with our agenda. Item number three, we have an application for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music at 274 Main Street. This is a wine and malt license with a fee waiver request for the following dates. March 1st, 8 to 10 p.m. for the Jonathan Richmond concert. March 3rd, 4 to 9 p.m. for the Board Teachers Comedy Tour. March 10th, 2 to 4 p.m. for Field Notes Storytelling Events. March 15th, 8 to 10 p.m. for the Back Porch Songwriter Night, The Songs of Willie Nelson. March 16th, 1.30 to 10 p.m., The Preservation Hall Jazz Band. March 17th, 1.30 to 10 p.m., The Richard Thompson Concert. And March 29th, 6.30 to 9 p.m., The 2024 Banff Mountain Film Festival. And do we have someone here from the Academy? Hello. Hi. How are you? Uh, my name is Melanie Slaybaugh. I'm the new theater manager at the Academy. Nice to meet you, Melanie. We'll be seeing lots of you. <laughs> um, has anything changed in how you're planning on holding these um, events? Nope. All right. Uh, Jennifer and Helen, do you have any questions or comments for Melanie? I don't. Nope. The paperwork's complete. I'm all set. All right. Then is there a motion, please? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses along with, am I seeing it? Oh, yes, along with the fee waiver um, uh, for the items as detailed in item three of the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you so much. See you next time. Item number four, we have an application for a common victualler license for Taipei Hibachi Corp, DBA Taipei Hibachi at 16 Crafts Avenue in Northampton. And do we have somebody here from Taipei? I don't see him. Okay. Yeah, I don't see him. Okay, and it is the same owner. It was just a same. renovation. Same owner, just renovation and new concept. Okay. Um, and we also have them for agenda item number five. We can um, we can bump them to later in hopes that he joins us or we can discuss it and approve contingent on the rest of the paperwork. Uh, why don't we give them a minute to show up? But yeah, if we have to swing back and they're not here. But yeah, I would say let's move forward. Yep, and keep going. Okay. Great. Item number six, then we have an application for short term liquor licenses for the Northampton Center for the Arts Incorporated, 33 Holly Street. This is a wine and malt license with a request for a fee waiver for February 23rd, 730 to 930, February 24th, 730 to 930, and the 25th from 4 to 6 p.m. This is for the world of piano. There's also an event on April 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. for the Genius Experience. And who do we have here? We do have somebody, yes. Hello. Hi. How are you, Joanna? I'm doing well, how are you? Thank you. Um, you wanna let us know a little about these events that you're having? Yeah, well, 33 Holly is fully reopened. And so now we have lots and lots going on. And this coming weekend, we have a collaboration with Pioneer Valley Jazz Shares, which is that World of Piano series. Um, three concerts, early nights on Friday, Saturday, afternoon on Sunday. And we will be selling wine, hopefully, at the new concessions area. So now there's like a actual bar in the lobby of 33 Holly. Mm -hmm. You should come see it. That's you great. should all come see it. <laughs> That's great. Um, and Annie, I'm, I'm noting that there is a need for proof of liquor liability. Yeah, yes. I have a call to my insurance agent. I am hoping you can approve these pending my ability to send in what you need. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem, I don't think. Um, are there any questions for Joanna or comments? Uh, I don't have any questions. No, no questions. Okay. I have no problem um, moving this forward for a motion contingent on the liquor liability piece. Yeah, I'm fine with that. 
to, I can go ahead and make a motion uh, to approve the short-term liquor licenses for Northampton Center for the Arts, uh, contingent upon the proof of liquor liability and as detailed in item six on the agenda. Second. Um, did, sorry, did that include the fee waiver? Oh, I apologize. So I will amend that to include the fee waiver. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Has um. Thank you, Joanna, for coming. Thank you. Um, Annie, has Taipei joined us? No. Okay. Item number seven. We have a discussion and possible vote to modify the executed settlement agreement to extend the deadline in paragraph six as amended by vote of the commission on December 20th, 2023. Um, which ties into you know uh, additional conversation for item number eight for to discuss cancellation. Um, Annie, should we bump agenda item eight first? Or however you want to do it. I would like to do that if the commissioners are okay with that. I'd like to go to the cancellation of the license held by the Calvin Theater Corporation and Eric Schuer in accordance with the executed settlement dated May fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Um, my recommendation on this is to not yet cancel this license until we have a lot more clarity from the ABCC around whether or not that license is going to go poof and back to the state, disappear from Northampton due to our over quota um, status, or if it's a license that we're going to be able to keep. I was under the impression we had that information. Do we, is that not confirmed? We, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I guess I'm so, uh, all um, <laughs> we have that information but it's not he didn't put it in writing and I don't I don't trust that we will be able to hold on to that license until he the general counsel puts it in writing and saying that if you cancel that license you will be able to reissue it because all he said was we're updating our records after I found that discrepancy and I, yeah, I I just, I don't trust them and I don't want to risk anything, but wow. um, that's all, that's. Yeah, I think the yeah. information and guidance has been too inconsistent and I agree with Annie, I'd like to see it in writing to ensure that we have an understanding of what's going to happen to that license before we make a vote and what to do with it. Do understand that I am wondering, do we have any indication or information from Eric Sewer that he is moving forward to try and get this paperwork from the DOR to be able to do this transfer at all? We do. Annie, have you gotten any updates from Eric? No, I have not. Um, Eric is here and I'm willing to recognize him if he would like to provide an update. He's not on the agenda, so he may not be prepared to do that. But if do you, um, you want me to unmute, Ask yes, to unmute. Okay. Eric, would you like to um, join us for a quick update? Okay, he may not be able to unmute i'm just i'm seeing it muted i have asked him to unmute but it's okay he may have stepped away from right um but let's assume there is no update right um, you know no forward motion i don't want to um i i just want to have a clear-headed approach to it and not jeopardize it um what regardless of if there's an update or not for me it doesn't it doesn't make a difference one way or the other if he had the paperwork if he had something to update us on then this this it wouldn't be an agenda item you know right. i think they could have gotten it to annie right away um is there so and and what is the status of the rest of the 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 deal with um bowery presents and mr sewer um you know, has everything gone through except for the liquor license? Do we know the status of that? That's a great question because um, 
I the last I knew there was no there the lease wasn't signed. Um, I know there's a letter of intent, but you, you can't. I don't think you can apply for a license without showing that you control the premise. Um, yeah, and I think it, Eric did just come back in, so maybe he wasn't able to unmute. So I'm good. There we go. I've been trying to. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, I've been trying to unmute, and then it knocked me out, and then I had to go back in again. So I'm happy to try to answer any questions that you have. Great, thank you. Um, could you get us an update on the status with the uh, certificate of good standing with the DOR, where the Calvin? We, we are still we are still working on our filings, so that there is still no certificate, and that's it's from my understanding is still going to be quite some time before we're able to get that. And however else we can try to help facilitate what you know what is still um, an ongoing effort to um, allow our um, upcoming tenant to hopefully be able to you know make um, a situation with this license happen as um, the lease is not yet signed and completed but it's still ongoing um, between attorneys at this point and back and forth so that is still still moving forward. Do you know the status of the conversation around the lease between the attorneys the, in terms of a timeline? Um, yes, it's it's it has been back and forth uh, for some time and there's decent progress that has been made. So I think it's fairly imminent that um, that that will be completed. A letter of intent was signed, um, you know, several months back. Um, Natasha, I and I don't want to put her on the spot, but the attorney um, representing Bowery in the license is mm -hmm. is here. Um, just just so you know. Okay, great. Um, I would like to recognize her if she has anything she would like to add. Um, hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon. I represent um, Bowery Presents and Facility Concession Services uh, with regard to the licensing transaction. Mm -hmm. um, I do, uh, however, have an update and consistent with what Eric um, just said to the to the board as well. There was an LOI, LOI signed some time ago with the first draft of the lease um, from Bowery sent in December. Um, they did receive comments back um, several weeks later from Eric's team, and I know that Bowery recently responded uh, within the past week, sending their uh, negotiations on the lease terms back. Next steps are to have um, a call between the parties to hopefully move the negotiations along quicker. So lease negotiations are um, currently active and moving forward, um, and that's that's what we can say about the lease at this time. Happy to answer any other questions that we possibly can with regard to um, the lease or, or licensing as well. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Helen and Jennifer, questions? Um, I guess I'm just trying to figure out the timing of everything. So um, the it sounds incredibly big Eric, I'm not getting a sense that you're feeling that anything will um, will happen with the DRR. I'm I'm not understanding if it's on their behalf or it's on your behalf. That no, it's on our behalf, and the you know the timing, which would help to necessitate the building to reopen. Um, you know, as was discussed with how the Iron Horse transfer happened, uh, we would love to see something in similar fashion so the building can get reopened and shows can get booked. And I know that that the license commission and the city helped facilitate um, a transfer uh, that that allowed the iron horse to submit um, and to, you know, hopefully within the time frame necessary um, have um, the ABCC, uh, you know, allow for that transfer in there in the time frame. And we would hope that, um, you know, with uh, attorney Scanlon's help and with the commission's, help and cooperation that something similar could happen so that, um, you know, the Bowery and affiliated partnerships can um, start getting some bookings on the calendar uh, as they were hoping to do to, to salvage, um, you know, uh, what, what is now being booked for fall season. Okay. Um, so the only thing, the only thing holding me back, honestly, well, I don't know. 
which way to go, whether we cancel this month or we cancel next month, because that is what it's sounding like to me. It doesn't sound like there's, unfortunately, it doesn't sound like the paperwork will be there to just do this transfer as part of your um, deal with Bowery Presents. Um, my concern would be delaying in any way, of course, the Calvin getting this license. But um, since we don't know if, as you say, this license will go poof, I don't know if it makes sense to cancel it now. Um, if if that doesn't con cause concern, I mean, I don't know when uh, the other piece of timing is when will we know from the ABCC? Do we think that before our next meeting that we'll know from them whether this is a license we can hold on to and redistribute? Um, I have asked Attorney Seawald to get this in writing from their general counsel. Okay, so, I mean, they work on their own time. Right. <laughs> a lot of people seem to be doing that. Um, so so I guess my, my feeling is if it doesn't jeopardize anything to push this off another month, then I have no problem with not canceling it today. I am foreseeing that that's what's going to have to be done in the future. And we are just fingers crossed that this is something that we can just transfer and it doesn't disappear and then we have one fewer license to, you know, distribute to these other restaurants. So, so, so I guess, I guess my thought is, yeah, if it doesn't jeopardize anything to hold off for a month, then I am willing to push this yet again. Just, you know, saying just so everyone, for everyone's review is that it's been now a full year since we started the discussions about canceling these licenses. I think it's been five months of extensions you know, since we had the agreement, because it was supposed to be the end of September. So, you know, I guess the question is, is there a reason to delay or not? I mean, it sounds like it's not going to make a difference one way or the other. I mean, yeah. so I guess if we canceled today, either way, we're going to find out whether this, that wouldn't jeopardize it disappearing, right? I mean, that decision is going to be made whether we cancel it today or next month. You, did you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I I agree with that. I think um, I feel it's a little bit cutting off our nose to spite our face. Right, I get that. As much as I'd also like to cancel it, you know, <laughs> yes, um, yeah. I just I I want um, I want the ABCC to perform a little with a little bit more integrity where this is concerned in our you know Annie's communicates with them a lot. I know Helen, when we've worked on other things in the past, you've communicated with them. It's, um, I just don't want any surprises, even though it might be inevitable that we lose it. I would just like to have, have proper communication come from them so that we make it a truly informed decision before we cancel it. I understand that. Yeah. Can we call a special meeting after we have the clarification from the ABCC? Does this have to drag out for a month? I mean, yeah, you can always uh, call a special Tasha can do that. Yeah, we could do that. That's a great point, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah. So not to muddy the waters, is to, uh, there is news that was going to be brought up during um, new business sort of relating to this whole issue of the uh, licenses for license for that we have um, given to the iron horse and however it shakes out with the Calvin. Um, and, you know, we have uh, attorney Scanlon on the line. I, we are very, very much committed and invested in, in doing what we can to move the Bowery presents project forward. Um, so Annie, do you want to explain what happened this morning or would you like me to? Um, I'm, I'm happy to, um, so I, I got a call from the ABCC saying that um, because the Iron Horse purchased assets from Iron, sorry, excuse me, the parlor room purchased assets from Iron Horse Ventures, which is the entity that previously held the license, it, they still need to provide a DOR certificate and a DUA certificate. Um, yeah. So, and this has never been required in the past for a new license. Um, 
And the investigator said that she had talked to Ralph Sacramoni, the executive director of the ABCC, and he agreed that a DOR certificate would need to come from Iron Horse Ventures, even for this new special act license that is not tied to Iron Horse Ventures. Wow. It's yeah. pretty awful news and really just, just distressing, but um, I've had a few hours to think about it since Annie and I last talked. And Annie, if you could just clarify, so this was the investigator's findings in processing the application. It must be voted on by the commission, the three members of the ABCC. Uh, yes, although she said she wasn't, she she didn't, she's not putting it forward. She returned it to me with no, no action. Can you review that one more time? Because I think I, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I, so. I know, it's bad. Yeah, yeah so this is bad, right? And so I assume. So basically that... we're in the same situation prior to canceling the license. Yeah. So yeah, so we essentially lost a license and we're still, and they, they can't use it. That's what you're saying. So I assume Eric is aware of this and. I'm um, he is um, now. He is now. Yeah, he may not have been in. Yeah, they've right. parlor as, room as the as the um the seller. He he wouldn't get that notification. Okay, so he's currently getting this notification. Um, so everything's just come to a screeching halt again. That's what I'm understanding until. Yeah. So there's no more delaying. The I uh, you're saying the Iron Horse will not be allowed to serve alcohol unless Eric gets this certificate from the DOR. Yeah. Wow. Um, hmm. And this is, I mean, Annie, is it possible that it's not as definitive as that once the um, parlor room's attorney has discussions with um, CCC? Yeah, I, I mean, the... Um, the parlor room's attorney has been notified and is on vacation this week, but it will, when he returns, we'll be contacting the general counsel for the ABCC because really the, the license is what the ABCC can regulate, not any other transaction as far as I, my understanding, but. I do see that Kristen has raised her hand. I don't know if that's a yes. I would definitely like to recognize Kristen. Thanks. Um, I, I guess I'm just curious, based on our potential future transaction for a new license, should the existing Calvin Theater license be canceled? If with sorry, it's the Parlor Room or Iron Horse. The Parlor, the parlor Room. room. So with the parlor room, as part of their application, was any at part of their new application or application for a new license, I should say, was any purchase and sale agreement submitted with it? Yes. Because it wouldn't necessarily have to be. That's That's how their attorney submitted it to us. I, I, I guess I agree with you, Annie. I, I don't know. I've, I've never seen that before, but I'm happy to talk further um, with you offline to try to help with any clarification for either that license or the Calvin one too, so that everything can be stream, streamlined if we're, we might, if the problem with the DOR and DUA certificates remains a problem in longstanding where we can't obtain them. Um, you know, the ABCC has obviously seen stuff like this before um, and how to how to work around that or who we need to talk to up there to assist. So I'm happy to help in that regard. Thank you. So. Um, so all of this, you know, obviously it factors into this conversation of how to handle this this license for the Calvin. 
Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, ter it's terrible news. Yeah. But Annie, I'm sorry to go back a second, but is this an appealable decision? I don't understand. Um, it, uh, it's not really a, an appealable decision, but I, I mean, the Parliament's attorney can talk to the right. ABC's general counsel. Yep, I follow. Um, they don't, I don't know, they don't usually budge on things that they decide. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just when you said it wasn't presented to the three member board, I was just wondering if if that gives us an opportunity to I don't know, meet meet some kind of a demand. So so they, they sent the application back to me detailing yep. everything that they need fixed. Um and that includes the compliance certificates. Right. And it and it, they won't move it forward until I've sent back everything they're looking for and then the, yep. their investigation has been satisfied and then they move it forward to the commission. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I understand now. Yeah. So um, just to tie up some of this agenda, Andy, do we need to vote on item number eight for cancellation of the license if this is just a discussion? Um, well, I mean, if you're canceling the license, you'll need a vote. Right. I'm not. not in favor of canceling the license. Right. I'm at this point well, not in favor of it either. Um, but I just, I, you know, I mean, Eric is here. I don't know how much more, you know, what is it going to take? I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know if this is about paying taxes. I don't know if it's really about filing paperwork. Um, you know, I, but all of Northampton <laughs> would like, would like this to be resolved and the areas beyond and all of the restaurants who are waiting for liquor licenses. I mean, once again, ripple effects are large. Well, the, the investment that the entire team at the parlor room has made in moving this forward is is just it's I don't even have a word for it um to say that this is a disappointment for them is a massive understatement they've worked really really hard for this and for the community at large and um right the community is like financially pitching in other businesses are pitching in I mean yeah everyone's rallying around this to happen and there's just one thing holding it back and now the shows are announced. I mean, they're ready to go. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for item number seven, then discussion and possible vote to modify the executed settlement agreement. I would like to issue another continuance for this. Yes, I agree. And then I guess, are we just continuing month by month at this point? I think so. All right. And so what we're saying, well, I mean, I guess we'll cross that bridge. But if we, yeah, if the ABCC says we can hold on this license and we cancel it and the issue, we're still going to be running into the same situation with the compliance. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. How should that motion go? Jennifer, are you in agreement with that? Or do you have anything to add? Nothing to add. I'm in agreement. Thank you. Um, um, I can give it a shot, I guess. I'll make a motion to modify the executed settlement agreement to extend the deadline um, in paragraph six as amended by vote of the commission on December 20th, 2023. One month to, I don't know what our next date is. March 20th. Um, to the next meeting of the commission on March 20th, 2024. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you. And has Taipei joined? I don't think so. No. All right. Well, let's jump to item nine. Um, 
discussion and vote to determine the means of issuance of the remaining two all alcohol liquor licenses in accordance with chapter 76 of the acts of 2023. Um, so we in the past have typically done lotteries when we have licenses available um, given, you know, I, I'm given, I'm, I'm committed still to, um, or I would like to see one of these two licenses kind of earmarked in the event it needs to be issued or in the event we vote to issue it to Bowery Presents as we did with um, the Iron Horse. That's on the table for discussion, of course, because we have, you know, we're also hearing from two additional restaurants and we know there's a third restaurant who would like um, a license. And if, um, you know, we're limited in what we can, what we can work with. Right. So is, are, are you proposing um, that we take one license and do a lottery in the nearer future and then hold on to the other one and find out what happens with the... I think it's important to hold on to one of them until we figure out what is going on yeah. um, and have that assurances from the ABCC that the license for the Calvin, were we to cancel it, we keep that. You know, we just, we don't have that info. We don't have that information yet in a manner that gives us 100% assurances. Um, so I feel like one of these over quota licenses is kind of tied to that process, you seeing that through until we have more information. Um, and just to recognize that, you know, we, and whenever we've had licenses available, we talk about all the options to distribute them. And we have historically chosen to hold a lottery. I know other commissions review applications one by one and pick, which seems a little hairy to me. I would <laughs> much rather have um have an application process and then uh have a lottery based on appropriate app applications right. and then that brings us to andrew's um comment and question about being a, a yet to be opened restaurant and would they be eligible for a new list historically has it read that Oh, historically, I guess, do we have the wording about it's an existing restaurant that has a wine and yep. malt license is in good standing with the city. Yep. Oof. And yet then we also talk about economic development and, and attracting new businesses to the area. So that's, yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, To muddy the waters a little bit. I'm just trying to, this is like a big logic game with this whole, this blow that the ABCC has now given us about that no matter what happens, we still need to get that those compliance certificates. Unless, although it sounds like Kristen, you may have some some way around that. Um, well, I don't know. It's, I guess it's too much of a risk. Part of me is thinking if if we need this compliance certificates either way, then we need to let Eric hold on to that license until he gets some so that he can do a smooth transfer um, to the Calvin. And that would still leave these, that would leave those two licenses available to be redistributed now through a lot lottery. I don't know if that's a risk though, if we find out that the ABCC was mistaken or they're going to change their opinion about it. Um, so I, I don't know how you all feel. I just, I'm just really feeling for these other restaurants who've been waiting and waiting and waiting, um, you know? You know, um, and and we could, we could wait to decide how to deal with the extra license because is it going to be one extra license or is it going to be two extra licenses? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess part of me is thinking like, let's just do it. Let's just, you know, those two should go into a lottery because... I don't know, but I don't want to jeopardize anything for the Calvin either. But it sounds like either way, we're waiting for this compliance certificates. Um, I don't know if I'm making logical sense to you too, but but that might be too big a risk. Um, I would just I just wish we could make those two available as soon as possible too to restaurants. But the safer route, um, I guess, would be to make one available. And then, yeah, and then the question is, if we're in agreement about that, is it a lottery and do we now extend um, the language to include new businesses coming to the area? 
which of course may uh, rub some the wrong way who have been here now. And well, I mean, something to consider on that note is he doesn't have a location secured. Yeah. So it's, there's no business yet. Yeah. You know, and, it, and, it, and, you know, I'm glad that he came to public comment and is on the record because we, we need, you know, and it's completely out of our control, these imposed quotas. We can't do anything about this. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly more businesses would come to Northampton if we had more licenses available. And, and Andrew Brow just, you know, exhibited that. Um, so I'm not sure without a signed lease or location or actual business to open, if it makes sense to put that person into the lottery. That to me seems unfair on top of unfair. Yeah. I think, I think our logic when we first talked about it with, with it being an existing restaurant with an existing wine and malt license that you're essentially not jumping over that hurdle. You know, it's, it's showing that you have a track record that you've, you know, used it, you've been in compliance and you're, and you're a restaurant who is now looking sort of for the, to the next level. I mean, I'm satisfied with the wording that we had previously. Um, to and not complicate it by a new business or or a business that doesn't already have a line of all. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jennifer? I would not modify the wording on the on the application process. Um, but what I am thinking of are are uh, prior discussions that we've had in, in terms of of our city just sort of self regulating the licenses. This is another argument for that, you know, just to know that Drew has another business um, that he's trying to open here just uh, further proves to me, you know, that that is a discussion um, because we are up against these arbitrary kind of quotas. Uh, it just makes it very difficult for everyone, mm -hmm. new or existing businesses. Yeah, it really does. But short term, I, I would be comfortable doing a lottery for one now. I mean, as long as that process would be acceptable for Annie, if, you know, if in theory we would have a lottery now and then a, a lottery again, once we have clarification. Is there, no, here I am muddying the waters again. Um, is there, I, I guess I don't know how other towns do it. I mean, because an argument can be made to like the restaurant who's been there long, the longest with the, you know, the longest, you know, track record of having a wine and malt is the next in line. Um, and I know we've yeah. never done it that way. And and I guess I don't know why, but, um, you know, and I don't know if that makes sense or, or not. Yeah, I actually don't know. Um... Amherst reviews or the last license they had available, they reviewed applications one by one and selected somebody for the license. I don't know what, I didn't watch that meeting. So I don't know how they, they came to that decision, what criteria they used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I would say only if we start going that direction, we need to have very clear criteria about how we're making that decision. Obviously it's not, you know, a popularity contest. Yep. Um, and and not to say that anyone in this commission has ever, you know, demonstrated that kind of, you know, attitude. Right. But then that that goes. I'm sorry, Helen, but that also goes against the economic development cap, right? And I feel like that kind of stunts development and growth in our community. Mm -hmm. If we handpick who gets the license, yeah, yeah, it's a good point. I, yeah, I'm far more comfortable with um, continuing to do lotteries. <laughs> You know, okay. yeah. and as Annie had pointed out before, when we do this, we'll meet in person to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm fine with that. With a hybrid option, but the commission would be in person. Okay. So, um, it sounds like we're all in support of using a lottery approach to one of the two remaining licenses. Yes. Yes. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion? Uh, uh, and so, sorry, it's March 20th is the 
And that's, is that when we would do it? Is right at the next meeting? Do we have enough time to get letters of interest and all that? Is it March 20th? Is that? March, March 20th. Um, so, I mean, I could, so is it the same criteria as has been done in the past? Like, yeah. Do you, do you happen to have that in front? Is that something that's easy to, um, or is that difficult? Just also for, I'm sure there's interested parties who would love to hear that <laughs> or on the call right now. <laughs> yeah. It should be included in your, um, your motion. Uh, of course, I don't have it. Um, um so mm, must be an existing wine and malt license holder in the city of Northampton. Must be open for business four or more days out of the week. Must exercise the license within 90 days of approval from the ABCC. Mm. Cannot be an all alcohol liquor license holder in the city of Northampton and cannot have any previous licenses revoked by the commission. So if Andrew did have a restaurant open, he would not be able to apply because he has another existing license based on that criteria. Based on this criteria, correct. Okay. Um, but he also he also wouldn't be able to apply um, even if that criteria was removed. It, because he's not an existing wine and malt holder, he wouldn't be able right. to apply. Right. Okay. Okay. You, so are you saying the motion needs to include all that that you just said? <laughs> is, that, is that what I heard? Or just um yeah. What is the, or is there a title to that document you're looking at? Or is that something you could send me or um yeah, I can send it to you. Natasha, aren't you glad that you found out you're not supposed to make the motions? <laughs> yeah, love it. Love it. <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible for you to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> it's against the norms. <laughs> Instead, you have to listen to me stumble through them. Okay. Um, okay, got it. Oh, boy. Okay. So, okay. So going back to the question, is, is March 20th enough to um, give these restaurants summer present now? So they know they have to get on it. Um, you know, time to, that you put out the request for a letter of interest and that they send in. Yeah. Order. I mean, I can send out the letter tomorrow. Okay. Um, and the way you do that is you send it to anyone who has an existing wine and malt license. Is that the method? If that's the criteria, then yes. Okay. And can we specify whether it's um, annual or seasonal or both? Oh. I, I think both. I mean, I think either. I mean, I don't know how you all feel about it. I don't... Um... Didn't we just have this conversation about the seasonal? Well, with the, yeah, with the sub rows of the new business, we jumped right over. We hurtled right over seasonal. We actually, you did have this conversation because we were going to decide on what to do with these licenses months ago yep. um, and then kept holding off. And so it was a discussion about whether or not to include seasonals in the, in the lottery. What and I think that? Jennifer had some good guidance in that regard. Um, and if I'm recalling correctly, we landed on not excluding the seasonals. Is that 
how you guys remember it? That's my recollection. Also, they, they have to be open for business four or more days out of the week. And there are several seasonal license holders that are only open seasonally. So it would, they wouldn't be allowed to. Okay. Do we need to modify to say open for business four or more days out of the week year round? Or does that imply year round? Or I think we need to. I mean, you can, there's nothing wrong with more clarity. Okay. So I will add that. Um, okay. So, and Jennifer, you, yes, you feel, uh, how are you feeling about the seasonal versus annual or including both? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. Including both. Cause uh, okay. yeah, I didn't want to go through that last discussion, but I, I know what you mean. I, I just felt that the ABCC didn't, uh, support the seasonal because they were telling folks to not apply for the seasonal and go the annual route. So without their support, yeah, I I would include both. Okay. Okay. I will make a motion. Here we go. Um, to issue one of the- Not ish, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, to, uh, uh, for the means of issuance. What to hold a, a lottery because we're not you're not issuing the license you're just allowing somebody you're just allowing letters of intent oh i was going to say issue through a lot lottery but is that not um so to hold okay i will make a motion to hold a lottery in order to issue i don't know if i should not say one of the remaining two all alcohol Liquor licenses in accordance with Chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023 by means of a lottery to be held on at our next meeting on March 20th, 2024. Um, those included in the lottery must meet the following criteria. They must be an existing seasonal or all annual wine and malt license holder in the city of Northampton must be open for business four or more days out of the week year round, must exercise the license within 90 days of approval from the ABCC, cannot be an all alcohol liquor license holder in the city of Northampton, cannot have had any previous licenses revoked by the license commission. Does that cover it? Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, let's jump back to four and five. And I don't think Taipei has joined us. Um, these are the applications for the common victualler licenses for the two um, concepts for Taipei Tokyo. Are we okay? I mean, it's the same owner. Um, as in the past, I'm okay with with um, approving the common victualler contingent on receiving the new workers' comp insurance. I'm fine with that too. Okay. Yeah, we need the paperwork. Yeah. Yep. Um, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect? Yeah. So this is uh, we're going one at a time, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is four. I'll make a motion uh, to approve the common victualler license for Taipei Hibachi Corp DBA Taipei Hibachi contingent upon receiving the workers' comp insurance. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Just jump to the next one. You're good with that, everyone? Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the common victualler license for Taipei, Taipei Corp DBA, Taipei and Tokyo contingent upon uh, receiving the workers' comp insurance. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And yes. Item 10, approval of minutes. Do we have a motion for January 30th, 2024 and February 16th, 2024? That's you, Jennifer, go for it. Sure, I'm, I move forward to approve the minutes from the January 30th, 2024 and the February 16th meeting of 2024 as outlined in item number 10 of the agenda. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. 
and Jennifer. Yes. New business. Well, <laughs> spoiler alert, you already did the big business. Um, is there anything else? I have I'm afraid. Yeah. Is there more? <laughs> please, please, nothing more. Oof. I have none. Actually, Annie, how was that meeting that you had with, um, you had a conversation with somebody about liquor licenses and the, the, um, quotas? Oh yeah. From the, um, was it the state auditor's office or the treasurer's yes. office? It yep. was good. Yep. Um, yeah, I expressed strongly our um, frustrations with the quota system and the ABCC and the legislature. And I think pretty sure I got my point across. And are they, is this, are they, are they information gathering from communities at random to maybe move something forward and remove the imposed quotas or? Um, let's see, he was from the, yeah, the auditor's office. Um, I guess there's an ongoing municipal impact inquiry about local license quotas and the legislature's consideration of home rule petitions that have effect on licenses in cities and towns. Um, and I, it sounds like they're going to be coming out with a report. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know how he chose Northampton. I, I know it we weren't the only one. It was it was probably communities that he sees put in home rule petitions um, to the state, and he probably spoke to those communities. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, for Helen and Jennifer, I was just doing a little research on the quotas and came across something that really surprised me because I had no idea that this was a thing, but some communities have been allowed to opt out of the imposed quota system. What? I know, right? Oh. And uh, is there some criteria for opting out or they just said we're opting out? Um, I'm yeah. Sorry, I'm pretty sure it's a ballot question. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, uh, Rep. Sabados is actually looking into that for us. Huh. Yeah. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that mentioned in the economic development meeting. I think that Annie and Alan were in, and uh, I mean, some some towns have done it. So it is. It is possible. I would think it would be supported in this community. Yeah, that's what I was just, that was going to be my next question. If we had a crystal ball, I think it would be too. But of course it would be, you know, getting the information out there. And right, right. But it is, I mean, as we all know, it is a near constant uh, story <laughs> to discuss yeah. liquor licenses in Northampton. So, yeah. yep. All right. Um, anything else? before we adjourn. Nope. All right. Okay. So we have a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Thank you.